Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Lyric. In this video, I'm going to get you started on using your machine with basic operations. So to start with, let's lift this up right here. Now, when you first turn on your machine, you're going to be in this mode here, which is your quick select mode. It's going to give you your straight stitches, your zigzag, and a few other stitches. So when you start sewing, you probably want to be able to do a straight stitch, 5 8 inch seam. I'm going to show you how to do that. To start with, you want to have this stitch here with a left hand needle. That's this one. That's what your machine wakes up to, unless you set it differently in settings. But as a default, that's how your machine is. Left needle position is going to give you a 5 8 inch seam as long as you put your the edge of your fabric on the line. There's a um, mark on the needle plate that says 5 8 inch back here and there's one on the plastic part of the needle plate right there. As long as you line that up and you start sewing, you're going to have a nice 5 8 inch seam. So I'm going to just start sewing here. Whenever you start sewing, put your finger on the thread when you first start sewing and that helps keep that thread from tangling. So I'm going to sew a few stitches here. Get my foot control on the, there we go. Now, I'm going to put a back stitch in and then sew forward. Oh, you know what? I didn't put uh, I didn't put thread in the bobbin. How about that? Let's put that thread in the bobbin. This is a quick freebie threading. We also are going to have another threading video. Let's see how fast that is. You just can put that right in there. Okay, 5 8 inch seam. Put that right down there. So forward, backwards, forwards. And at the end, another back stitch. And then you can either lift your needle this way and cut your thread, or you could do the thread cutter button. So this is set so that it will stop with needle down. Notice what happens when I push that thread cutter button, it cuts the threads and lifts the needle up. And see, there are the thread tails in the back, and you can either trim those off or just leave them like that. So that's your basic 5 8 inch seam with a, um, I wasn't sitting right in the front of the machine, um, basic 5 inch, 8 inch seam. Now, if you want center needle position, you'd push this number three, and that puts the needle into the, then you would use different um, lines on your machine to get your quarter inch or your 5 8 inch uh, seam allowance. But this is a good default one right there. Also, you've got one that does a locking stitch at the beginning. So you might be wondering, why do you have these four different straight stitches? Well, I already indicated one's left needle, one's center needle. But if you look carefully, you can see one of them has a um, back stitch and one of them has a locking stitch. So I talked about that in my overview. This is your back stitch, this is your locking stitch. So if I push this button here, now watch what happens. See, it automatically gave me a back stitch without me pushing this button. So if I push this now, I don't have to hang on to that button. I don't even have to put my foot on the foot control. It does a locking stitch automatically. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off and we're gonna start over again. This time, I'm gonna put this in here. So instead of using this button, oh well, let's just see what happens. Okay, so back stitch is built in. I'm gonna stop right there, push this button. It does my back stitch, and also it does an even number. It doesn't overshoot or undershoot. It gets it right where it needs to go. Plus, it cut it, cut the thread automatically. So these are real time savers to have these here. You can turn them on or off. Now, if you want just the cutting, you can't have just the cutting. It has to be in combination with the um, tie off there. But you can, can have just the tie off by itself if you want. Now, what about doing zigzag? Okay, we've well got two zigzags. You got five and you got six. The difference between those is again, you have a back stitch built in on five and a locking stitch built in on six. Then we have, and each of these stitches can just be 
accessed with a single button push on in this particular mode where it has it like a little keypad. This stitch number seven is this stitch that's nice and bold here. That's actually three threads for every stitch. So it goes two forward, one back, two forward, one back. And I've got this uh, sort of twill fabric and you can see it stretches on the bias really nicely. This is an excellent seam to use when you're sewing uh, anything that has sort of a bias to it, let's say the back crotch seam of pants where you sometimes that the thread just pops because it's a single stitch. Well, this is going to stretch. It's also good for sewing backpacks or purses or things like that. Another thing is you can see it's a nice bold top stitch. Now this one here is also a stretch stitch. There we, oops, there we go. It's a stretch stitch, but it doesn't, it's like a bent zigzag. And this is good for knits. It doesn't put quite as much fabric or quite as much thread into the fabric, but you can also, it's narrow enough that you can press your seam allowances open if you want to. Now this one here, number nine, gives you an overcast. And here I had it set on default, but you can also make it wider if you want to. And I did make it wider because this is a sort of more co coarsely woven fabric and I wanted it wider. But see how nice and even and flat that overcasting stitch is. That's number nine. And then zero is your three-step zigzag. This is a zigzag that, um, well, like its name says, it has a zig and a zag and then a couple stitches in between. Excellent for mending. So if you have a hole in your fabric, put a little piece of fabric on the back. And I use contrast thread, but I could have used a dark thread to really help it blend in. Excellent one for mending towels or whatever has a hole in it. Okay, so that's your basic uh, operations of this machine. We have other videos. I'm going to do another video or show you another video on how to operate this keypad and get into stitch combinations and things. But if you found this video to be helpful, uh, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.